In the headlines, Dominica's Social Security announces a decline in contributions opposed to Hurricane Maria. CARICOM Secretary General calls on Sweden to help remove the label of non-cooperative tax jurisdictions placed on some CARICOM countries. And the students of Ross University expected to return to Ireland in the first half of 2018. I am Andrea V with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. Thank you for staying with us. First up, Social Security contributions on a decline due to significant job loss in the private sector since Hurricane Maria. Ethan Jean Baptist has that story. The Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce reported in October that since Hurricane Maria, 500 people had lost jobs. Director of the Dominica Social Security, Janice Zajak Thomas, says her institution is concerned that looting on businesses resulted in several cases of job loss. You see, you know that Social Security depends on contributions from persons who are employed or who are even self-employed and from voluntary contributors. And to the extent that many places were looted, and that was one of my concerns when I walked for Roso on a Wednesday after the hurricane. When I saw so many people passing, having looted business places, I was concerned and I kept on saying, but when they do that, how do they expect these places to have jobs for their, 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 their relatives later? And we as Social Security, we are seeing and we will continue to see the impact of that. Because we know that a number of, of persons have been made redundant. Some of them temporarily, at least until the businesses can come back up. But in the meantime, it means that these people are not employed and so they have been, they're not able to pay contributions. The DSS has also seen large payouts from the state's redundancy fund. Social Security also manages a redundancy fund on behalf of the Ministry of Labor. And we are seeing a number of claims to that fund, people claiming redundancy benefit as a result of they having lost their jobs because of redundancy caused by the devastation of Hurricane Maria. So, um, although we expect that there's going to be a boom in construction, but you know construction has always been one of our challenge areas. So our officers really have to follow up um, with a lot of diligence on the various projects that are going to be taking place around the island to make sure that we continue to receive contributions and that the insured persons over there receive the coverage that they, they deserve from the Dominica Social Security. The DSS has resumed registration and issuance of Social Security cards after minimal disruption of its service since the storm. But our operations have not been adversely impacted in the sense that even before the banks were open, we were able to go to the office to make sure that our pension, our benefit payments continue to be paid on time. And so in that regard, we did not, it, didn't, it did not hamper the efficiency of our operations. One thing though is that because of the damage to our, our office building, we've had we've had to to have all staff accommodated on just one floor so we from one from three floors we are now just operating on one floor so it's a bit cramped for the staff but they are enduring and they understand um, why we have to continue like that the major thing that people look towards us for is the payment of benefits that wasn't disturbed by the hurricane so we were pleased to be able to go in even in the messy office to, to make sure that we could send the payments to the banks. And for that, we, I thank the staff who were involved. In other top stories, Secretary General of CARICOM, Ambassador Erwin Narok, wants Sweden's help in highlighting what he says is the unfair labeling of CARICOM member states as non-cooperative tax jurisdictions. Ambassador Larocque is concerned that while some CARICOM countries are blacklisted by the EU, these same countries in question are not so designated by the relevant global authorities, such as the Financial Action Task Force and the OECD Global Forum. Ambassador Larocque says an attempt by the European Union to screen CARICOM member states went beyond tax transparency and accountability standards, which our countries have been meeting over the past several years. While Dominica is not among countries blacklisted, Prime Minister Skerritt says his position on the matter is consistent with that of CARICOM. We always maintain that it's unfortunate that these institutions, these countries 
uh, take these decisions about the well-being and welfare of our, of our countries. I mean, these decisions, I, I do not understand, I do not know if they do not understand the implications for, for the economies of these countries. You know, um, and it is the actions, you get the sense that there are no real uh, sensible conclusion or basis upon which they came to these conclusions. Uh, and it's unfortunate. You know, I, you know, I was in um, Morocco, just gone past few days meeting the Prime Minister of Morocco, and he was raising the same issue with me that, you know, they've been blacklisted and asking what on what basis, you know. So it, it is a it is a real concern um CARICOM has and not just the fact Dominica was not mentioned, it will also impact Dominica. Because we're part of one single space, whether we we accept it or not, we're one single space. Um and I have always known a country like Barbados, for example, uh, to be uh, an example uh, to all of us here in the region and the world in terms of uh, of prudence and responsible governance and so forth. And you know, when you list a country like Barbados, for example, you know, in this, it raises a lot of concerns as to really what basis you really came up with that um, with, with that decision. But. Um, we, we endorse and we fully support the CARICOM's um, position on this matter. Trinidad and Tobago, St. Lucia, Grenada and Barbados are on the list of 17 countries released on December 5. Several of the Caribbean states that were affected by the September hurricanes, including Antigua and Barbuda, were given a reprieve to get themselves compliant. Ambassador Laroc has urged France to leverage its influence for the EU to desist from taking such arbitrary and punitive actions against those CARICOM states it had blacklisted. In other news, Prime Minister Skerritt has expressed hope that Ross University can resume classes in May 2018. Ross students were forced to return to the United States to continue their education following Hurricane Maria's impact on the main campus at Picard as well as their living quarters. Following Hurricane Maria, government appointed a committee to work with Ross University as regards its rec recommencement of classes. Government is also assisting property owners in Picard who provide accommodation to the medical students through its loan facility at the Aid Bank. The idea is that these property owners can restore student accommodation in the shortest possible time. The majority of, the, uh, we believe, based on our, our, our findings, about 80% of the rooms which Ross needs um, for student accommodation is available now. Um, there are some property owners who were not impacted. Those who were impacted moved very quickly to uh, have the apartments um, fixed. And um, so that is the Ross has water. Ross has electricity. Um, the telecommunication services are in place. They can get internet. And um, we're working to extend the, with them, like, the, the, the coverage in enough so that um, going towards um, the other communities in Portsmouth in the, in the north that we have sufficient coverage in this. So um, so that's being done and we are in constantly contact with Ross University in this regard. It's our understanding from, from um, sources that um, the majority of students would like to return to Dominica. Uh, Dominica is the best place to study and we've had tremendous successes with the, with uh, or Ross has had tremendous successes in Dominica, um, you know. Um, so Dominica is the, one of the best places to to, to study. And even in, in my travels to the United States after the hurricane, um, where there have been Dominican gatherings, parents of students have made their way to these um, events to meet with me and to indicate that look, um, once Ross is prepared to come back to Dominica, they will agree to send the students back to Dominica, the children back to Dominica, um, because. Uh, the grades have always been good in Dominica. Student accommodation is expected to be one of the biggest challenges facing All Saints University as it seeks to resume classes here post Hurricane Maria. Prime Minister Skerritt was due to meet with the president of that university on Tuesday to discuss the school plans for reopening. 
Prior to Hurricane Maria, students largely depended on rental properties from private citizens in a number of localities which were affected by the storm. The impact of the flooding and other damage on these homes means students will have a more challenging time finding available apartments. Some of these apartments have been taken up by homeowners themselves who needed shelter after their homes were damaged by the storm. They were renting from a number of private citizens across the city from Castle Comfort, from Wallhouse, all the way to Canefield maybe. Um, so, so those of us who, who would have uh, apartments available um, may need to bring this to the attention of all things because they have said to me once they can get accommodation address, they can come back immediately. So for them, accommodation is a, is a huge challenge. As you know, the government gave them a new site in Warner on, on a 25-year lease agreement. Um, so we're hoping that they could um, advance the commencement of the construction um, while we address the temporary challenge which they're having. But if, if we can address the housing uh, issue confronting all states in the city and, and surrounding areas, then the, the, uh, the president of all states is saying to me that they can get back into the army quickly. The Division of Forestry is confident that the country's key tourist sites will be ready for cruise visitors come January 2018. Work has been ongoing to have everything in place to welcome cruise passengers to the island from January 2018 following an announcement from the Ministry of Tourism in October. Channel 5 News has been speaking to various tourism stakeholders over the past few weeks who have expressed mixed feelings over the opening of the cruise season next month. However, Forest Officer with Responsibility for National Parks, Jacqueline Andre, told Channel 5 News that good progress has been made on cleanup works on the main tourist sites. A technical team from Cuba was deployed to the island and has been integral in helping the cleanup effort. Progress has been really good. Um, the Cuban teams have assisted us with um, bot botanic gardens, as you know. But to, with regards to the ecotourism side, they've assisted us at Emerald Pool, um, Trafalgar Falls, uh, Syndicate Nature Trail, and Cabritz. Um, while we had assistance from the two Cuban team, we also had assistance from a t at, especially at Emerald Pool from a group from uh, Casabrus. Um, which was funded by the, the Ministry of uh, Tourism. Um, to date, uh, we have the ecotourism sites that are uh, accessible, are uh, Midland Falls, Freshwater Lake, Brewery Lake, and we're, we're, as, as we speak, we're now, in, uh, we are now um, clearing the Boiling Lake Trail. They, uh, they have reached as far as um, Breakfast River. So, the, the first phase was to deal with access to ensure that the, you know the trail that we could get back to the, the trail um, the trail beds. Um, the second stage will be safety issues like the railings, some of our railings and some of our steps and some other of our um, um, facilities have been compromised. So we we hope to deal with that in in the second phase. So hopefully, we hope by the new year that we can have our trails back to normal again. Of course, we will not see the beautiful trees that, you know, and the nice vegetation, but at least we, we will look forward to going to the site itself, like the pools, enjoying the pools and the waterfalls and all that. Do you know how long the team from Cuba will be on island? Well, actually, they're supposed to, today was supposed to be the final day. They will assist in the White Kubuli National Trail and um, they will leave sometime next week. Um, as we spoke about safety, you mentioned the guardrails along the very trails, but um, for the sites themselves, like the pools, are they structurally safe? I know Maria did a lot of pounding to the island, but in terms of safety of the site itself, how safe are they? Well, you'll be surprised that Emerald Pool is a little deeper, nicer, and the pools are pretty much, um, well, I nothing is really safe. But the, the pools are pretty much okay, so you can swim there. We've had, what they've done too, they've cleared the pools of the logs and, and branches that were, but that were below the pools. So I can say with some, you know, I'm not really an expert on that, but I think it's safe because people have swam there and they've not had any um, incidents. Now we're hearing we'd like to welcome back our cruise visitors from January 1st. Um, how confident are you that they are 
the sites are ready to welcome back our visitors? Well, this is one of my main concerns. I know for the eco-friendly eco um, uh, visitors, they don't mind climbing over the logs and, and passing through the mud. So that's why we have to be extremely careful, especially for our two um, highly visited sites, Trafalgar and Emerald Port, to put the necessary safety measures so that it can be as back to normal as it was before. So we, the, the cruise visitors can be more comfortable. Um, for the other trails, uh, yes, we have to look at safety measures, but you know, the, the, the real hikers, the adventure seekers, they don't want any fancy trails like Emerald Pool and, and Trafalco. They want to go, you know, and, and, and have that adventure hike. So while we are going to be putting some safety features, we, we are mindful that it's not going to be a nice, clean road. You know, we want them to enjoy, have a good experience as well. Andre also urged the public to remain vigilant at the eco sites despite the improved level of access. We just would like to the, um, the public to kind of be aware that while the trails are accessible, they, they have to be careful right now until we fully open the trails because you may have overhanging branches, you may have other things. And while we have already um, opened up some of the trails, um, I was told yesterday that we had like two trees fell on the Syndicate Nature Trail. So while we're doing that, remember, we're still experiencing some winds at some times and some rains. So don't expect to meet a, a very clear you know, trail. Remember, some of the trees were already shaken and may uh, get, you know, fall at some time. But, so, but we are very vigilant and we are monitoring so, uh, in order to ensure that safety is first and then to have the visitors, give the visitors a good experience. And we would like it for Dominicans as well, Dominican visitors as well. In other news, a trade union leader is against a move by employers to automatically dismiss employees for being absent from work after the hurricane for more than three days. Here again is Idona Don Baptist. According to the country's labor laws, an employee who is absent from work for more than three days would have had to submit a medical certificate to his employer or offer a reasonable excuse on the first day of not reporting to work. Secretary Treasurer of the Waterfront and Allied Workers Union, Curtis Augustus, says employees who did not report to work after their place of work resumed operations post Hurricane Maria should have been excused. Because we do not believe that somebody can be terminated uh, by reasons of the fact that they have been out of work without reporting, which is required by most of our collective agreements. Um, that they can be deemed to have terminated their service uh, because the companies have asked that the re workers report back to work and in some instances to do cleaning. If there is no communication, if that employee is not privy to a little radio where he may have got the news and he doesn't report back to work, if that employee have lost his roof or lost his house, what priority should he give? To get him back to do cleaning or to secure in his house where he could rest his head at nights? The appeal by the private sector for employees to clean up their place of work does not sit well with Augustus either. He says Wahoo is investigating cases where employees were discriminated against because they did not report to work to clean. Augusta says employers should also excuse people who left Ireland following the disaster with the intention of returning to the country. We have had instances where other persons have in fact moved out. I wouldn't say migrated. They have moved out during the storm. Uh, in one case it was for medical reasons and the other case was to just facilitate the transport of his daughter who was American and had to get her uh, back to the United States. So we are in discussions with those management in relation to those incidents. Yesterday I was in a case where an employer, the employer is saying that the man was in the state, did not respond to the call, when the man could show by his passport that he was out of state and got in the very day that he was terminated. These are some of the issues that we have to address. Somebody feeds some information to that employer 
he did not investigate to find out whether in fact it's true or untrue, he moves on to take disciplinary action against the employee. The trade unionist explained that he is not in favor of employees being made redundant without notice, even if labor laws make provisions for it. Although it is provided in law that um, when it comes to termination for reasons of redundancy, and that is happening as a result of a hurricane, that you are not required to pay the notice because people could get um, one month's notice and those that are more than 10 years could get two months notice. Uh, an employer could opt and say, look, listen, because of the fact that Hurricane Maria visited us, I am not required by law to give you notice. I have a difference in interpretation because the word says you may not. It doesn't mean that you shall not. So it left it open for the employee to so decide whether to give or not to give. But if that employee have worked with you for 26 years, is being made redundant, and then you deny him a little four weeks notice, you are an employer without a heart. And the Catholic community in Dominica has lost one of its first local redemptorist priests. Father Clement Jolly passed away on Saturday, 16th December, at the Premier Home and Residential Care Services, Fox in Mont Daniel. Father Jolly, who was 86 years at the time of his passing, had been diagnosed with cancer in April this year. Father Alistair Elias of the Religious Congregation of Redemptorist Priests remembers Father Jolly as a man of the people. Father Jolly to me has always been an inspiration since I'm a young student, as a redemptorist student in the 2000s. And I encountered Father Jolly right here in Dominica, my first trip. He has always been a simple man, but a man who is very, you know, particular, like health. He was very health conscious. But he was a very simple man. I mean, even in his old age, Father Jolly would leave here every Sunday and just go down to the village of Maro and play a game of domino with the guys and walk back up. So, you know, he's well known throughout Maro as, you know, that's his home village. But he's a very simple man, a man who loved prayer. He loved to pray. A man who loved people in general. I mean, Father Jolly would come, go down the road and come back and take everything in the house and give it away to the people, you know, and then people would come and he would just give away everything without asking who it's for, what it's it, because he always think that the people need is more important than our need. So that's the kind of man he was, a very prayerful man, a very simple man, and a man who loved people. Father Jolly was well known for his literary works, having written several pieces for publications both here and overseas. Father Jolly also penned several books, the last published work titled A Year in Remembrance. Before his death, he had completed yet another book titled On Being Christian. This book is currently being edited and is expected to be published soon. Father Jolly had been a priest for the past 53 years and had last served as parish priest in the St. Joseph Parish over five years ago. He has served many years. He's one of the first local redemptors in, the, in Dominica, in the Caribbean. So he's one of the old schoolers. And I remember when I got ordained and I was sent to Dominica, he said to me, it would be difficult, but keep on praying and keep on trusting. So he had learned that over the years. I mean, even little things like how to go about saying a mass with different special occasions, you just turn to Father Jolly and he knew everything by off his head because, I mean, he'd been doing it so long, it has become part of him, so he didn't need a book to tell you what's the rights, what's the path of the mass, how to go about doing it, and suggestion of how to make it better. Which was the last parish he served in, sorry, and when was that? Well, St. Joe was the last major parish he has been on, St. Joseph, where I am the pastor now. But Massac area, the Mao area, has always been a part of his heart. So although he was assigned, they would always make sure he come back to this area. So the, his last days of ministry was done in this parish, but not as a parish priest, but as a helping out. 
The funeral mass of the late Redemptorist priest, Father Clement Jolly, will take place at the St. Joseph Catholic Church on Saturday, 6th January 2018 at 11 a.m. To end the news, the headlines again. The Dominica Social Security announces a decline in contributions post Hurricane Maria. CARICOM Secretary General calls on Sweden to help remove the label of non cooperative tax jurisdictions placed on some CARICOM countries. And the students of Ross University expected to return to Ireland in the first half of 2018. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Lee, and to all of our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Join us next time.